The Werewolves game pack for The Sims 4 comes with some really extensive lore, not just for werewolves, but for other supernatural sims as well, like vampires and spellcasters. But finding all of this lore is reminiscent of a game like Dark Souls. You have to read item descriptions and in-game books, explore a complex tunnel system, uncover hidden items, and have very specific conversations with certain NPCs. Once you've pieced everything together, stories emerge, including the history of Moonwood Mill, vampires, and the magic realm. Long before the town of Moonwood Mill existed, an ancient race of people known as Myshupotamians had built a city on the same land. Myshupotamians were a moon-worshipping people who believed the greatest minds of their society were reborn as wolves, and those wolves howled at the moon to store their wisdom inside of it. As the moon moved through its waxing phases, filling more and more with light each night, Myshupotamians believed that was a visualization of the knowledge of their ancestors being sent to the moon, something modern humans might compare to a data upload or a charging battery. On the night of the full moon, my Shupotamians performed a ritual where they wore wolf masks and observed the moon, hoping to learn the knowledge of their ancestors. The waning moon in the following days is said to be a representation of their ancestral knowledge being dispersed among the people. The Myshupotamians also had a history of taming cow plants and using them to defend their tribe and their crops from outsiders. They also dabbled in crossbreeding cow plants to make them independently mobile, but apparently had limited success. Centuries later, a group of spellcasters studied the moon, believing they could use the moon to enhance their magic. These spellcasters Casters took wolves as their familiars, and they used the moon's energy to take on characteristics of these wolves. These were the first moon casters, and their names were Yina Kia, Maria Volkov, Avelina Lundvik, and Gregorius Lundvik. This group performed an experimental and unpredictable spell from the untamed School of Magic at the peak of Moonwood Mill's Howling Point Cliff, with the intention of imbuing themselves with some qualities from their familiars, but the spell was more powerful than expected, and it caused an overload, resulting in the Mooncasters merging with their familiars and becoming the first werewolves. This overload rained energy down onto Lake Lundvik, infusing it with magic that created the Lunafish and the Moon Petal Flower. The lake would go on to become a sacred place for werewolves. Each of the Mooncasters adopted traits from their wolf familiars. Gregorius Lundvik's familiar was an alpha wolf named Brutus, and Greg received his beastly strength, but also his rage issues, which left him trapped in beast form for extended amounts of time. Greg's wife, Avelina Lundvik's familiar, was named Gibby, and had a special connection to the moon, and this led to Avelina becoming obsessed with observing the cosmos and the night sky. She dedicated most of her life to studying the moon and the stars, and is even credited to the discovery of the planet Sixum. Avelina was convinced that her research would help her husband control his fury, and she performed experiments on him to this end. Maria Volkov's familiar was named Verity, a wolf whose princely nature enhanced Maria's dedication to diplomacy and sustainability. Maria and Gregorius butted heads a lot, and Maria believed Gregorius was jealous of her ability to control her fury. Maria's husband was named John, and they had a son together named Christopher, who would later inherit the alpha position in the Moonwood Collective Werewolf Pack from his mother. A book written by Maria Volkov called A History of Moonwood Mill can be found in the Moonwood Mill Library. Yina Kia's wolf familiar was named Renga, and they passed their love of adventure on to Yina. Yina's wife, Emmy, was a human who disliked her daredevil antics and just wanted to settle down and live a quiet life. Yina was eventually killed by a cow plant of the Moo Casters, not to be confused with the Moon Casters. Gregorius Lundvik was Yina's best friend and was particularly affected by Yina's demise, as was Renga, her wolf, who spent his remaining time by her wife Emmy's side, watching over her. More wolf familiars of the original Moon Casters are named in some old records, but it's unclear if these are familiars of additional Moon Casters or aliases of the aforementioned. At some point, spell casters started experimenting with duplicating themselves, but were frustrated with the fact that their duplicates needed food to survive. 
They tried many things to improve efficiency and reduce the amount of resources a duplicate would need, including feeding potions to their duplicates, and in doing so, they created monsters that turned on their creators and drank their blood. And the high levels of magic in Spellcaster Blood enhance these monsters' strength. These beings are the first vampires, and although it's not confirmed, many suspect that the Grand Vampire of today, Count Vladislav Stroud IV, was one of the original vampires. Almost immediately after the creation of vampires, a war between spellcasters and vampires started. Spellcasters tried desperately to unmake the monsters they unleashed on the Earth. Meanwhile, the vampires had a plan of their own, and they launched a covert mission to turn every spellcaster into a vampire, called Operation Eternal Flame. The spellcasters split into two groups, the mooncasters and the moocasters. Both drew inspiration from the ancient Mesopotamians, but they had vastly different methods. Mooncasters, of course, focused on drawing their power from the moon, while moocasters revived the ancient Mesopotamian practice of taming cow plants. The moocasters were also successful with crossbreeding cow plants, where the Mesopotamians had failed in that endeavor. The mooncasters and the moocasters were aligned against the vampires and this alliance proved useful against the vampires for some time. But this all fell apart when one of the original mooncasters, Ina Kia, was killed by a cow plant during a joint mission. Ina's death caused friction between the two groups of spellcasters, and vampires used this opportunity to strike. With vampires having the upper hand, the remaining spellcasters attempted to harness unstable magic once again to save themselves. They created an untamed spell that would cure every vampire in the world all at once, wiping them out forever, but the spell was too powerful and it backfired, causing a magic overload so powerful it ripped the magic realm into pieces. The magic realm never recovered from this, and to this day, the magic realm is still fragmented. Operation Eternal Flame ultimately ended, but some grudges still remain from that time. It's said that the Grand Vampire, currently known as Count Vladislav Stroud IV, had an altercation with Gregorius Lundvik, and the two still have a grudge that festers today. Eventually, the Mooncasters had children, and they discovered lycanthropy is genetic, but not guaranteed to be passed down, and some children are born with dormant wolf genes. Ultimately, it was discovered that swimming in Lake Lundvik during a full moon will awaken the dormant wolf within and complete their transformation. Several years later, refugees fleeing from another conflict settled in the area known as the Moonwood. These settlers built the town's sawmill and factories, and thus the Industrial Revolution had arrived. Over time, the mill became a central part of the town's identity, and the town was named Moonwood Mill. The mill's founders established the Moonwood Collective, a group that encourages sustainability, diplomacy, and community. They also just happen to be a werewolf pack. Maria Volkov was the leader of this group, their alpha, up until her death, at which time her son Christopher assumed the alpha role. Christopher is the alpha of the Moonwood Collective to this day, and he lives with his adopted son Jacob and Lily Zoo, a feral werewolf that Christopher took in and taught how to control her fury. Christopher also has an adopted daughter named Rory Oaklaw, who disagreed with his philosophy on fury and left home to create her own werewolf pack, the Wild Fangs. Gregory Gregorius Lundvik has survived to this day and is now known as Greg, the town's feral werewolf and a bit of a local legend. He's now permanently stuck in his wolf form, consumed by fury, potentially because of his late wife's experiments. According to Rory Oaklaw, if fury is an ocean, then the Moonwood Collective stays on dry land, Greg is drowning in it, and the wild fangs are happy to swim in it. The diary of Gregorius Lundvik, which can be found by digging around in Greg's yard, mentions something called the Century Conflict, and says that immediately after this conflict, the remaining werewolves scattered, but Christopher Volkov chose to stay. It's not clear if the Century Conflict refers to Operation Eternal Flame, or another conflict that happened later, but if indeed this conflict was a different event, we know very little about it. More recently, lovers Celine Lopez and Lou Howell were on a late night date in the woods that went horribly wrong. While showboating for his date, Lou taunted Greg, thinking that he was just a local legend, but the pair were attacked by Greg and infected with werebees, a disease that turns Sims into werewolves if left untreated. Celine sought a cure and found a drink recipe 
that reverses the bite's effects. Celine now works as the local barkeep at the Grimtooth Bar, where she sells that very drink that cured her to newly bitten Sims. Lou, on the other hand, embraced his fate and let the transformation happen. He's now a member of the Wild Fangs Pack. This experience left Celine with a large scar on her face, as well as a broken heart as the pair split up.